Um, and we're delighted to end with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to warn you, ladies and gentlemen, um, we bring the truth raw and uncut. And this broadcast is not for the faint of heart, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh. If you love the truth raw and uncut, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips. We let the chips fall where they may, and we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into our video on this day. The Messiah Christians embrace today is not the biblical Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Messiah that Christians embrace today is totally different from the Messiah we read about in the Bible. The Christian Messiah is as different as night and day from the biblical Messiah. The biblical Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach, addressed sin and taught us that sinners will go to hell if they don't repent. And John chapter 8 gives us the account of a woman taken in the very act of adultery. Yahoshua forgave the woman. However, Yahoshua said unto the woman, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Yahoshua did not give people a license to sin. He told the woman, go and sin no more. The Christian Jesus have given men and women a license to sin. The Christian Messiah doesn't mention repentance at all. You can live like a devil. The man that had an infirmity 38 years that laid at the pool of Bethesda, Yahoshua healed this man from his infirmity. But in John 5 and 14, it declares, Afterwards, Yahoshua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. We can see here that Yahoshua did not tolerate sin. Ladies and gentlemen, like Christians say that he did. Yahoshua told the man that was healed of his infirmity, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. In other words, Yahoshua said unto him, if you think your infirmity is bad now, if you continue to sin, your health condition will be worse than it is now. The only thing that could have been worse than his condition was death. This man laid on a bed for 38 years. That had to be very miserable. The biblical Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, preached repentance. Luke 13, verses 2 through Three declares, and Yahoshua answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. 
Mark chapter 1 verses 14 through 15 declares, Now after that John was put in prison, Yahoshua came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of Elohim and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. We find in, in, in the Gospels, the Bible tells us that Yahoshua went forth preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yahoshua, the true biblical Messiah, preached repentance. But the Christian Messiah today, he does not preach repentance. If the Christian Jesus was here today, he would be hanging out with homosexuals, sinners, ladies and gentlemen, shooting the breeze with them. Glory to Yahweh. Christians believe that homosexuals will make heaven and their Messiah condones this vile lifestyle. The Messiah's Christian, the Messiah's Christ, Christians preach rather, condones fornication, women dressing like hookers and whores, and men wearing long hair and earrings. Uh, the uh, Christian Messiah today, ladies and gentlemen, condones eating swine, flesh, catfish, crabs, lobsters, shrimps, rabbits, raccoons, clams, mussels, oysters, sharks, squid, octopus, and other unclean creatures. Christians say that Jesus cleansed these creatures for human consumption. Christians say that their Jesus changed the seventh day Sabbath to the first day of the week, Sunday. Christians have invented their own Messiah. Apostle Paul wrote that preachers will preach another Messiah totally different from the true biblical Messiah that we read in Scripture. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 4 declares, listen carefully, for if he that cometh preach another Messiah, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Ladies and gentlemen, we see here, that Apostle Paul hit the nail on the head, ladies and gentlemen. He said that they will preach another Messiah, ladies and gentlemen, and they are preaching another Messiah. This Messiah that they call Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, he condones sin, you can live like a devil. You can be gay. You can be a fornicator. You can be involved in every sin imaginable, ladies and gentlemen, and still be accepted. This is another Messiah. Glory to Yahweh. Many Christian churches today have grace in their name. For an example, Names like Sanctuary of Grace, Grace Baptist Church, Grace Pentecostal Church, Grace Tabernacle, Assembly of Grace, Grace Worship Center, the list goes on and on, etc. These churches are conveying a message to the world. What message are they conveying to the world? Their message is that you can live any kind of lifestyle and God's grace will cover it. And their Messiah, Jesus Christ, will accept it, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, you hear them today saying, you don't have a, a past here, only a future. Glory to Yahweh. This ooey, gooey, caramel, amen, uh, Messiah that they're preaching today, ladies and gentlemen, you can live like a heathen and still make heaven. Look at the Jesus that Joel Osteen and Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes and Jamal Bryant, ladies and gentlemen, and 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 uh, Rick Warren and Jesse Stuplantis and uh, Paula White and Juanita Bynum and, and all of these, ladies and gentlemen, false teachers. Look at the Jesus that these people are uh, preaching. Look at the Messiah that they are teaching today, ladies and gentlemen. They name their church. They put grace in that church, in their name, the name of their church. They put grace there because they convey a message. They want you to feel like you can come here. You can live any type of lifestyle. You won't be convicted in our ministry. You can come and you can do anything underneath the sun and we will make you feel comfortable right at home in your sin. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians love to quote John 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Christians believe that grace is a license to sin. They don't have a clue what grace is and what it means. Christians misconstrue grace. Romans 6 verses 1 through 2 declares, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Elohim forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Ladies and gentlemen, bless the name of Yahweh for the truth. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, Paul said, I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercy of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to Elohim, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of Elohim. Yahweh is looking for holiness. For the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 that he shall present unto himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it may be holy and without blemish. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see Yahweh. If you want to see Yahweh, you must live a holy life. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians, beloved, 2 Corinthians chapter number 7 verse 1. Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God of Yahweh. Oh yes, we must live a holy life. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 15 through 16, but as he which have called you is holy, 
so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Verse 16, if you read it backwards, it will say the same thing. Let me read verse 16 forward to you. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now let me read it backwards. Holy am I, for holy ye be. If you read it forwards or backwards, it's still holy, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. It's holiness or hell. Bless the name of Yahweh. Praise his holy name. But this Messiah that's being propagated in the Christian church, ladies and gentlemen, he condones sin. You can live like a hellion. You can do anything underneath the sun and still be accepted. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Elohim forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let's look at what Apostle Paul said about grace. Now, Apostle Paul had a, a awesome understanding, ladies and gentlemen, about grace. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 12 declares, For the grace of Elohim that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. True biblical grace doesn't make one feel good in their sins or give one a license to sin. Biblical grace brings conviction an admonition. In Titus chapter 2 verse 12, grace teaches us to deny ungodliness. Grace don't teach us to feel good in sin. Grace don't make you feel good in sin. That's not true grace. That's not biblical grace if, it, if you feel good about your sins. Oh, Yahweh will cover it. He understand that we humans and we got the sin. We can't help ourselves. Well, let me show you what the Bible says about that in 1 John chapter number 3. Listen what the word of Yahweh says here in the book of 1 John chapter number 3. Glory to Yahweh. And I want to begin reading with verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. You see that? An individual, a Christian that commits sin is of the devil. This means a person that practice sin, a habitual sinner, premeditate sin and do it. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sin is from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Elohim was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whosoever is born of Elohim does not commit sin. If you're born of Elohim, you don't practice sin. You are not a habitual sinner. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. But I hate when I hear these Christians say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Listen, if you are a sinner, you're not saved. <laughs> Amen. True believers are not sinners. We're not sinners. Ladies and gentlemen, we may slip up, we may fall, 
a righteous man falleth seven times and rises up again. But we're not sinners. We don't practice sin. We're not sinners saved by grace. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. <clears throat> Whosoever is born of Elohim does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of Elohim. And this the children of Elohim are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not do is not righteousness is not of Elohim. Neither he that loveth not his brother. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, the word of Yahweh is right all by itself. So the Bible tells us in Titus, now let's get a good understanding of grace. Paul gave us a clear understanding of what grace is because Christians misconstrue grace. I mean, they just fillet grace. They don't have a clue what grace is and what grace really means. Titus 2 verses 11 through 12 again declares for the grace of Elohim that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Yahweh's grace have appeared to all of us. And look what grace does. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. True biblical grace doesn't make one feel good in their sins or give one a license to sin. Biblical grace brings conviction and admonition. And Titus 2 and verse 12, grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and grace warns us to live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Acts 17 and 30 declares, and the times of this ignorance Elohim winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, Christians have invented their own Messiah. And this Messiah is as different than the true biblical Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach, as night and day. He is totally different, ladies and gentlemen. And Apostle Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians uh, 11 and 4, if anyone come preach another Messiah, which we have not preached. Yes, there is an, there are other messiahs out there being propagated, being preached today. Then Christian pastors teach that their messiah was rich and wealthy. They teach this. They even teach that the disciples were rich men. They liars to try to justify their prosperity heresy. Uh, doctrines of devils, ladies and gentlemen. One scripture that Christians and Christian pastors use to try to justify their claim that the Messiah was a rich and wealthy man is John 19 and 23. It declares in John 19 and verse 23, then the soldiers, when they had crucified Yahoshua, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier, a part and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven, woven from the top throughout. Many Christians today, and particular prosperity, pastors and most of the Christian pastors are prosperity pastors that preach the prosperity gospel. 
Say because Yahoshua's coat he wore was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Proves that he was a rich and wealthy man. Because only rich people in Yahoshua's day wore seamless garments. Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe that? You know, these prosperity preachers, they take the scripture <laughs> and where it says it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. They take that scripture and rest to their own uh, destruction. Have you heard them teach that before? You know what they teach? That the eye of a needle is, is a gate in Jerusalem. That the camel can get through it, but he just got to get on his knees and crawl through it. That is demonic. That is wicked, ladies and gentlemen. To justify being rich. Preachers to justify being rich. Say that that, that eye of a needle that Yahoshua mentioned was a gate in Jerusalem that the camel camel have to get on his knees. He can get through it, but he got to get on his knees and go through. That eye of a needle was literally a sewing needle. That's what Yahoshua was talking about. The eye, the, the loop, the hole at the top of a sewing needle, ladies and gentlemen. But they take the scriptures and twist them all up. They twist them, ladies and gentlemen, to deceive people and justify their greed and covetousness, ladies and gentlemen. Bless the name of Yahweh. So they said because Yahoshua uh, wore a garment that was seamless, that proves he was rich. Because only rich and wealthy people wore garments that were seamless. My goodness, people do anything, ladies and gentlemen, to try to justify their wickedness and their sins. Bless the name of Yahweh for the truth. This is nonsense. The Bible tells us, now, let, let's see what the scripture, what, I don't know what Bible these clowns are reading, but the scripture, let's see what the scripture has to say about the true biblical Messiah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and I want to draw your attention to verse number 9. Now look what it says here. Look what it says here. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For ye know the grace of our master Yahoshua Mashiach that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now listen, the scripture says, though our master Yahushua Mashiach was rich, he was rich. He left glory. The earth was his and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwellers therein. He owned the whole world. He created it all. He was he. He, he was rich. He left his palace in glory, his throne, ladies and gentlemen, to come down here on planet Earth to live like a peasant, a nomad, a transit, a homeless person, ladies and gentlemen. Born in a, in a poor family, impoverished family. Uh, Yahoshua grew up in the ghetto, the slums, the hood, and Nazareth. That's what the projects was, ladies and gentlemen, where the impoverished people lived. And his dad and himself were carpenters. And carpenters in ancient time were not wealthy men, ladies and gentlemen. And that was some very hard work. You didn't have Home Depot and Lowe's to go and get your supplies, your wood and what have. No, you had to go out there 
a man. You didn't have um, uh, power saws, ladies and gentlemen, gas saw. No, you had to do it manually, everything. And you had to pull those logs out of those woods with a mule or ox. Ladies, it was some, some grueling work. Amen. And it didn't pay much. Yahosh was earthly father. Joseph was a carpenter and he taught his son, Yahoshua, a man, the same uh, trade, ladies and gentlemen, the same craft. Glory to Yahweh. So Yahoshua was not a rich man. He lived in poverty. Uh, his disciples, fishermen, was a low-paying job, ladies and gentlemen, very low-paying job. You, you didn't even have to be intelligent to be a fisherman. All you needed was some uh, um, good physicality, some uh, a good back. You can pull those nets out of the water, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't have to be an intelligent individual. Glory to Yahweh. They were uh, blue-collar jobs. Amen. Blue collar jobs. I mean, bottom, ladies and gentlemen, of the blue class, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Yahoshua, though he was rich, scripture said he became poor that through his poverty, he lived in poverty, that we might become rich in Elohim, rich spiritually, not rich in houses and lands and, 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 and wealth and all of these things, ladies and gentlemen, rich spiritually. Bless the name of Yahweh. Listen, Yahoshua, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. He didn't even have his own tomb. He had the Passover meal with his disciples in a barred room. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he barred a room to have his Passover amen meal with his disciples. Then the ass, the donkey that he rode on was also barred. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to you. It wasn't even his own. And Yahoshua said in the book of Matthew, chapter 8 and 20, as I close this broadcast, he said, the birds have nests, the foxes have holes, but the son of man have nowhere to lie his head. Yahoshua had no certain dwelling place. He didn't know where he was going to live from day to day, ladies and gentlemen. But thank Yahweh, he had disciples, and in particular, the women, the Bible say they minister, amen, to his knees. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they helped him. And, and he didn't have much at all, amen. But this Messiah that these Christians are propagating today, ladies and gentlemen, he is a uh, illusion he is an illusion ladies and gentlemen amen they invented their own messiah bless the name of yahweh and he is as different from the true biblical messiah that we read in the scriptures as night and day ladies and gentlemen well we thank yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again. And we will really appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen for that. Amen. Also, amen, we would like to hear from you. Hear your thoughts. Send those comments. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to hear from you. If anyone have questions, uh, you need to talk to me personally. Amen. We will give you our email that you can uh, talk to us, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to know more about our ministry, know more about us, 
Amen. Feel free, glory to Yahweh, to contact us. Bless the name of Yahweh. Well, we thank Yahweh for you all. We thank Yahweh for all our followers, all our friends, ladies and gentlemen, all those that are affiliated with this this ministry, this uh, voice of truth in the earth, ladies and gentlemen, a voice crying in this end time wilderness, ladies and gentlemen, preparing the way of Yahweh. We thank Yahweh for each and every one of you. And may Yahweh continue to bless you and yours. Amen. Until we see you again. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Amen. Shalom. Shalom.